Well, again, good morning on this Mother's Day morning. Let me just uh, say thank you. I'm glad that uh, Dustin allows me to get up here. They, they let the other ministers out of the, the cages every now and then, so I'm, I'm glad to be here this morning. Uh, but I wanted to say just with this Mother's Day, uh, there are a few things. This is what we're going to do this morning. I'm going to address a few emotions that may come about on Mother's Day. We're going to look at three uh, things that will just build a godly legacy as a woman. And uh, then we'll conclude our time here this morning. Um, but first, let's pray. Father, we are thankful. Lord, we are thankful for all of the godly women in our midst, Lord, that uh, we're rubbing elbows with right now. And Lord, I just thank you for their faithfulness. I gotta thank you for their devotion. And I thank you for, God, just their ability to shine your light uh, to this community, to those around them. And we just love you and we thank you for uh, the sacrifice you made on the cross that would bring about the joy that we do share. It is your name we pray, amen. Well, like I said this morning, I want to just address a few emotions that come along with Mother's Day because they're not, we all know they're not always joyful and not always exciting. And again, this sermon is not just for mothers this morning and not even just for you ladies. This is also for you guys. So please, there'll be a quiz afterwards and you need to pay attention. But it's not, I, I joke, but it's not just for you mothers this morning. It is primarily for you mothers uh, and for you ladies. But we all can, can glean something this morning from today's message. We do not get a Sunday off. And so I want to say this morning, uh, there are two camps of emotions that kind of come about from Mother's Day. Uh, number one is joy and excitement. There's kind of a buzz in the air for, for many here in this room about uh, being a mom. Maybe you're the mother of a small child or children, or you have a quiver full of preteens or teenagers, uh, and you've, or maybe you've seen your children grow into uh, to successful adults, uh, and they've started their families of their own. There is so much to give God praise for this morning, Right? There's so much joy to be had for those situations. And maybe you're joyful uh, this morning because you're, you're thinking of a godly woman, a godly mother that has impacted your life in some way, shape, or form, that has changed maybe every single step along your way, that you could always go back and you could call her and you could say, hey, mom, hey, I, I just need some prayer. I just need this. I just need that. I need your help. And she was always there. And there's a joy and excitement and there's a thankfulness that comes along with that. Or maybe you're a husband this morning and you have seen uh, your wife grow into the mother uh, that God has given her, given her to be. And you are thankful that your children get to call her mom. And that is at any age. You are just so thankful that you have a faithful, loving wife that is amazing mother to your children. And to those emotions this morning, I say rejoice. The Lord has given you much to be thankful for, and therefore lift your eyes, rejoice, praise him for all that he has given you. Amen? Amen. And secondly, there is a sorrow and a hurt that does come along with Mother's Day this morning. As usual, uh, it, it, it just kind of is one way or another, or many of us are kind of, we blend in these kind of things. We're so excited in one moment, and the next we're a little bit sad. And we're so joyful in one moment, and the next we're a little bit hurt. Because we, all of these things just well within us. And so maybe you're sad or you have sorrow or hurt this morning because you're reminded of a mother who's recently passed. And though you know that her eternity is sealed, you still just long for a hug. You still long to be with her and to hear her voice. And maybe you're reminded of a mother that it was absent or distant during your upbringing. And maybe it's, uh, you're brought to tears over the pain of childlessness this morning. Maybe you're grieving the loss of a child who's passed before you as a mother, or you're dealing with the difficulties of the relationship between you and your mother or you and your children. And so on both camps, uh, but to these emotions, uh, I, the sorrow and the hurt, I say, lift your eyes. Lift your eyes to the Lord because Jesus is the king. Our ultimate joy and our ultimate satisfaction is found in him. And I know this, that Jesus doesn't promise to take the suffering away from us, right? But he promises that he will be with us to the end of the age. And so suffering may not pass here in this life, 
But we know that Christ is here this morning. We know that he is with you and he's close to the brokenhearted. Know that enduring these hardships and sorrows are for the glory of the Lord. On the other side of these situations, you will find, whether in this life or the next, a beautiful testimony about the faithfulness of God. And so I say, lift your eyes this morning. And so that's what we're going to do. We're gonna, I'm going to give you a moment, and whether it is praise or it is hurt this, this morning for you, I would ask that you would go to the Lord and you would pray. And I'll give you 30 seconds to pray on your own, and I'll close this in prayer, and we'll continue on this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we know that there's so many emotions this morning, and Lord, we give them all to you. We praise you, and we also give our hearts to you this morning. In Jesus' name, thank you for doing that. All right, this morning, to get started, uh, you see the title here, The Legacy of a Godly Woman. It is something that is just different. In honor of giving such an opportunity this morning, uh, I, I've, this is honestly the easiest sermon I have ever written. Seriously, and it is because it is based entirely on many women that I have seen. You're like, you're not, a, you're not a mom or a mother or a woman. You're right, but I have seen some of the most godly women to walk this earth. I really believe it. And so writing this sermon is just basically recording some of the things about their life that just makes sense, that just has such an impact. And I want to start with uh, Shelby's grandmother. Her name is Donna Campbell. And I asked my father-in-law, uh, who was a preacher for many years and now... Uh, he gets to hang out with his grandkids and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, but I asked him to write about his mother um, and the godly legacy that she has left. He says this, Donna Jane Campbell, with a maiden name of outlaw, it could have turned out really bad. <laughs> but God had bigger plans. She loved to serve. He says, my mother made family a priority and made sure all of us heard about Jesus. This was especially true for her grandchildren. Along with loving her, Jesus at home, she was also a faithful lover of Jesus at work and at her retirement. Many of her coworkers had many things to say about her love for Jesus. Alongside of family and work, she served the local church. She helped with children's groups, vacation Bible school, young adult groups, and finally, uh, in her last task, uh, an older adult small group that she loved and ministered to. In all of these things, she was all in. Many people have said that her fire and her zeal were often hard to keep up with. All that to say, her godly legacy lives on in many, and the world can use many more like her. And next, I think about Shelby's mother, who actually is her stepmother. And I wanted to say that this morning, that gen genuinely, blood relation almost has nothing to do with motherhood, right? I want you to think about this. If you, are, if you this morning are thinking, well, I am not a mother, or I am suffering with childlessness, God has still called you to be a godly woman and leave a godly legacy, and you can still 100% be motherly and a mother in, in this certain situation when God calls you to. And so uh, it's a beautiful thing. This is uh, Shelby's stepmother, but if you ask Shelby, she says, that's my mom. That is genuinely my mom. And here's why. This is what, this is what Kyle had to say about his wife, Rhonda. It's hard to put into words this amazing woman's godly legacy. Her desire to be a godly example is simply amazing. Not only with three children's lives that she was thrown into, basically a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 6-year-old. Shelby was the 8-year-old at this time when they got married. Her example has set pat the path and guidance for children that weren't blood hers. Looking back, it seems like she jumped right in and she just loved them as her own, which she did. After more than two decade, decades of her example of love and of simple, uh, of simple just guidance, uh, it's, un, it's unmatched. At the same time, she jumped in and was uh, helping lead my father-in-law in a youth group, and they, know, they, called, they lovingly called her Mama Rhonda. And many of those students still call her today with advice, with life advice, and she, they need somebody to, to steer them in the right direction. Well, they call Mama Rhonda. Uh, Kyle says this, later she quietly served at a small church as a pastor's wife, which may have been her hardest job ever. 
Her calm, steady walk with the Lord is often described, uh, hard to describe, but easy to see. Her legacy is still building and still impacting lives every day for Jesus. And of course, I think about um, my mom, who has come to faith in Jesus later in life, and she seeks to be the glue that brings people together at all events. She has an innate desire for everyone to be provided for and taken care of, and doesn't, it doesn't go without notice that her, she has a childlike love for being Theo's Mimi, and it brings about a joy that only God can provide. And of course, I would be a horrible husband without mentioning my own wife, uh, Shelby, who stands on the godly foundation that her mother, Rhonda, and her grandmother, Donna, have laid for her. And she will reach heights greater than anything, uh, I think, seen before, for the kingdom, because of that foundation, that legacy that has been left. She is a loving, faithful wife and a mother who teaches Theo worship songs, prays with and over him, and is sure to constantly shower him in hugs and kisses, even already when he does not want them. I know, he's already four, and he's like, I, it's, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't know what's going to happen next. But again, I, as I read these things, and as I kind of um, walked down these, these ladies' journey uh, just a little bit, many of you were probably thinking, and you were provoked to think about maybe your own mother, or your own grandmother, uh, who, who maybe drugged you to church every single Sunday and said, you're going to sit in this pew, and you're going to be quiet, and you're going to like it, Right? Maybe you're, you're thinking of somebody, uh, maybe your wife, um, but we all uh, can think of somebody this morning uh, that, that kind of has left, and we've seen a godly legacy. And so this morning, as we start into our three attributes, this is not an exhaustive list, our three attributes of go- a godly woman uh, and a legacy of a godly woman, uh, these are things that are lived out and that will transcend generations. These things are modeled for us in Christ. And we will look at him as the ultimate example for loving and leaving a legacy of godliness. Now, there is nothing wrong with looking to Esther, looking to Ruth, looking to Mary, the mother of Jesus, any of the, the women in the Bible that we glean uh, example from. But I want to say this morning, that Jesus is still, no matter what, if you are a husband or a wife or a mother or a father, Jesus is always the ultimate example, right? And so we will look to Christ as the example. So number one, if you want to leave a legacy, pray continually for those under your wingspan. I love this uh, illustration of uh, maybe like a mama bird that has spread her wings and has kind of taken in those near her into her nest and just said, I don't care who you are, I will love you. You are a part of mine, and I will provide and love for you. I cannot tell you when it comes to prayer just how much of an impact the faithful prayers of a godly woman do for the kingdom. I can't tell you that because they go often silent and unnoticed. However, The quiet prayers that no one will know about besides you and the Lord, they will send wakes of impacts through your families and those under your wingspan. I know that because I am indirectly uh, benefiting from this, all of the quiet prayers that maybe Shelby and the mothers around me are praying. Listen, Jesus continually prayed for the Lord, uh, prayed for those that the Lord gave him. In the Gospel of John, we, we get a recording of Jesus praying for his disciples. And I love this because this is, this is as close under the wingspan as you can get for Jesus. He's right here with the disciples. He's walked for three years with the disciples. They're under his wingspan, and this is what he prays. I love that we get this snapshot of the heart of Jesus for his disciples when he's praying to the Father. In John 17, uh, verse, starting in verse 13, he says this. Now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy complete in them. He's, talking, he's praying to the Father about the disciples. I have given them your word. The world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not praying that you would take them out of the world, but you would protect them from the evil one. 
They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them so that they also may be sanctified by the truth. And I love this picture that Jesus gives us. When he is talking about the ones and praying about the ones that are closest to them, uh, there are a few things in which this prayer, if we consistently do, if you guys uh, as ladies consistently do, that you will be like Christ, praying for those that are near you. He says, I have given them the word. And I think that we all would value uh, the, the kingdom values that when we give those near us the word of God, it does not return void, right? When we give those, if our words and our songs and our life is the word of God, there is nothing more impactful to the relationships that you have around you than giving them the word. And then he says this, the world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I think of you ladies, that as you raise children and that you love on those that are in your wingspan, you may think the same thought, the world is going to hate them as I send them out, as they learn to fly, the world is going to hate them as the world hates me because I'm not of this world either. And lastly, I love this. When Jesus is praying about the disciples to the Father, he says, I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Have you ladies prayed that before? That your children and those in your wingspan would be protected from the evil one. Not that they would go around the hardship, but they would go through it. In Christ, I think that's one of the most uh, common misconceptions about the Christian life, is that when God calls us, that we we hear the promise, we're going to make it to the other side, we're going to go through this, and it's going to be a good time. But Christianity does not give us a detour, right? Christianity does not say, "Hey, your life is going to be fun, and you're going to you're going to avoid all of the bad things, and then on the other side, you're going to make it to the good." In fact, the way out is the way through, right? And Jesus knows this enough to say and pray about the disciples, I pray that when they go through it, they're protected through the evil one. And when I think about you guys leaving a godly legacy as as ladies, that this prayer may be one of the most powerful things that you could pray for those around you in your wingspan, that the Lord would protect them, but they would ultimately still go through it. Why? Why? Because on the other side, there will be a beautiful testimony about the faithfulness of Jesus. I also think about uh, a lady at, my, at First Baptist Queen City. Her name was uh, Miss Ella May. She, when we first got there, I was 22, just green as could be. And she, uh, she introduced herself as Granny Dingbat. And I said, what? Certainly, I can't call you that, right? She said, no, I want you to call me Granny Dingback because that's what I am. But I guess you could call me Miss LMA if you want to. And I was like, okay. Well, she will faithfully call. She has a giant calendar. and She will faithfully call every single person she knows on their birthday. Can you believe that? Every single person will get a birthday call and will get prayed for. And I think that's beautiful. And so when you think about this godly legacy of prayer, um, that's who I think about. Next, if you want to leave a legacy, feed them. Feed them. John said amen, right? Amen. And I think all the, all the boys were like, um, Miss Katie, you know, or mom, she, she cooks for us. She does a good job at that. We know that. I love that. So feed them. If you want to leave a legacy, feed them. I'm not saying here that, uh, that the actual food, the actual provision is like the main goal here, but it is much, Jesus does this so often in the Gospels, where he uses a physical provision like food to break down the barrier in which they can come in, he can come in and he can provide a spiritual need. And what I'm saying is that is a beautiful example for us here this morning. When you think about Jesus feeding the 5,000, I don't have time to read uh, what I have up here, but in Matthew 14, we can go back and you can read that Jesus fed the 5,000, and on top of that, he couples it with uh, healing the sick, 
And he, uh, he says that he had compassion over them. And he saw the large crowd and he healed their sick. And then he fed them. And I think that's beautiful. And then you think about Jesus in the upper room with his disciples, right? We, from what we get the Lord's Supper, what did he do? He took bread and he broke it and he gave it to them. They didn't understand what was happening just yet, right? They had no idea. They're like, what is, this is your body? This is your blood? I'm so confused. But Jesus, in a provision, said, here is spiritual need. Here is the spiritual need. Let me, let me just take this a little bit further. Ladies, God has put it in your biology to physically provide for children. Think about that. You guys, praise the Lord, are the only ones that can grow a human being within you. And you are, your body is providing the nourishment for a child to grow. Not only, that, that does not stop while they're still in the womb or after they get out of the womb, right? You are literally created, and of course sin has messed this up for, for many, but in the intention, God has created for you to be able to feed said child from your own body. And there's something about when, you're, when you are eating with somebody, like, like at dinner or in this uh, instance with a mother and a child, you have to be close to them, right? You have to be so close. Well, why, is, why are you so close? So that you can pay attention to every little thing that's happening. As a mom, you're paying so close attention. Is that a new cut? Is that a new thing? Oh, I need to cut his nails. All these things you're paying close attention to while you're doing this physical provision. And so if we take it a step further, when you get later into life, I'm not saying that you have to be a good cook like Miss Katie here. I'm not saying that you had, like, listen, mom, if you're watching, I love your burnt frozen pizza, but, <laughs> but I know that mom knew that she could provide other ways, right? She said, here's $20, go to McDonald's. That's the same thing. I'm not saying you got to be a good cook. What I'm saying is you got to provide maybe physically so that you can step into the spiritual nourishment of those that are in your wingspan. So I think about uh, a lady uh, who had much to do with my faith conversion. Her name is Miss Sandy Holland, and I call her, I don't know why there's nicknames around me, uh, but she told me to call her Mama Cornbread. <laughs> what do you think she's good at making? Yeah, it, cornbread. She, every time I'm at her house, I, she's like a mother to me. I know that if I sit down for longer than 30 seconds, there's going to be some kind of food in front of me. Whether it's cookies she baked or brownies she made or a full spread, right? Can y'all still hear me? <laughs> Whatever it may be, I'm sitting at the table and she's going to feed me. And then I know after my third or fourth bite, I'm going to get a question. Right? Hey, how are things? Hey, what's going on in your life? Or I love this one. What, so what's new? When she says that one, it's because she already knows what's new. And she wants to know if I'm going to tell her what's new. Right? So listen, but I know that there are so many things. This ultimately kind of led to my spiritual salvation. This led to my salvation, this kind of love and nourishment and physically providing for, it kind of drew me in as a well-rounded young man at her house. I knew that I was going to be provided for, but I knew that it was going to be even further than that. The impact that you may have on somebody by physically providing for them and then taking a step further and feeding, and feeding their soul is something that we will remember forever. And so if you are doing this, praise the Lord. And if you are too nervous to do this, I would ask you to take a step out, buy somebody lunch, buy somebody dinner, make somebody something, and ultimately make sure that you are pointing them to Christ in the meantime. And number three, if you want to leave a legacy, spend your days faithfully pouring out your life for those that the Lord has given you. If you want to be like Jesus in a life that is left in a legacy uh, that models Christ as a, as a woman, spend your days faithfully pouring out your life for those that the Lord has given you because this is what Jesus did. Look at John 15, verse 9. It says this, As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Remain in love. 
If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. We know this verse is what I'm getting to. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if I do what I command. If you do what I command, I do not call you servants anymore because servants, servant doesn't know what the master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything I've heard from the Father. Listen, there is something so beautiful when a mother, when a lady lays down her life in a faithful service to those that God has placed around them. There is something so Christ-like about it. It's unmistakable. Just as Christ took the cross and was poured out as an offering for us, so too our lives become. That we pour out our lives just as Christ did. That we lay our life down for those that are in the wingspan. Ladies, Listen to Romans 12, 1, 1 and 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in the view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Ladies, if you want to leave a legacy and you want to continue to build this legacy of godliness, continue to faithfully pour out your life for those around you, as many of you are doing. And as many of you recognize others are doing, this is what Jesus did. But I want to end this morning with a story about Donna Campbell. I call her Nana because she was my uh, grandmother as well. This kind of love the Shelby's grandmother had. That if you were around her, you're calling her Nana because you're her child as well. And so um, Nana spent her days as a nurse. That was her profession. She was a nurse. She loved to care for people. She loved to be around people. And uh, later in life, um, in the last few years, uh, Gramps, so Nana's husband, Gramps ended up developing um, a rare form of cancer in his neck in which she cared for him. They fought this thing for, I think, eight years. I mean, just faithfully doctor's appointments, medical visits, doctor's appointments, medical visits, at-home care, uh, all these things. And so Nana faithfully, faithfully, faithfully poured her life out just loving and serving Gramps. And when ultimately, when Gramps was working towards the end of his life, we all could see it. We all knew, hey, this is going to be it this time. Nana went over time. She said, I'm going to finish well and so she finishes well, and Gramps passes, and, uh, and lo and behold, two weeks later, Nana begins to experience lots of symptoms. She had been fighting and, and honestly not telling anybody that she had been experiencing chest pains for many, many months while faithfully serving Gramps. And it turned out she had mesothelioma, and she had been just hurting for months and months and months. But she wanted to finish the job well. She wanted to pour out everything she had for those closest to her. And ultimately, she would end up passing only a few months after Gramps uh, because she honestly had nothing left. And I think about Jesus when I think about that story. And many of you may think of relatives that, or friends that have gone through this similar thing, but I think about Christ, that the point is when he got to that cross, man, he almost had nothing left to give. He spent his days loving and pouring out for those around him up until the point where he poured out his life blood, when blood and water hit the ground, right? Everything he did was to pour out for those around him. And if we want to leave a legacy, ladies, if you want to leave a legacy, we do the same. We pour out in love for those around us. To, to close this morning, to leave a legacy is to pray continually for those under your wing, wingspan. To number two, feed them. And number three, continually 
uh, is faithfully pour out your days, your life for those that God has given you. In closing, as the band comes up, I just want to say again how thankful I am for the, the life that I've, these lives that I've got to witness. And you may too be thinking how thankful you are for the godly women around you or that God has given you the ability to some degree uh, to be the godly woman and the legacy lever of your household. And so in that, I just want to say thank you and close with thanking the Lord. And I want, my urge is for as we, as we close this morning, is that this would be a time of reflection, of thanksgiving and praise and of giving over your hurts and sorrows to the Lord. And that there would be healing this morning. Let's pray.